Hello, my name is Cora Lindsay. I am a mother, a bit of a blog writer, an entrepreneur, a communications and marketing professional, a coach in various ways, and like many of you, I wear many hats. Right now I'm in an MS in entrepreneurship program, getting my master's in science and entrepreneurship at the University of Houston. It's an incredible program. Inside of this program, an assignment I've been given is to become an amateur TED Talker. We were given a book list and the book that I chose to get my TED Talk on is this one, Leading Without Authority by Keith Ferrazzi. We are asked to grab a concept inside the book that spoke to us that we want to discuss inside a, inside a mini TED Talk. So without further ado, here goes nothing. Uh, I want to start with a quote. I told our team that one of our most important design principles would be to look inside things that humans are fundamentally hardwired to do. Keith Ferrazzi, Leading Without Authority. That's a direct quote from him in the book. One of the biggest overarching themes that humans are hardwired to do is survive. I think we can all at least agree on that. This process that Keith Ferrazzi coaches his team through to help them organize their coaching efforts has a shorthand expression he has termed. He asks in quotes, are we working with gravity or against it? He's asking his team, are we working with hum hardwired human instincts, like the ones to survive and be a part of a tribe? And if so, we can be assured that we will be working with gravity. And as he puts it, with a force as strong and as durable as gravity itself, end quote. When you're working with a force as strong and as durable as gravity itself, working with that force, you can be assured that you will be co-elevating. You can be assured that you will be tapping into those hardwired human instincts to survive, to thrive, to be a tribe, to co-elevate, because to be a part of something bigger than you ensures your safety and your survival. And to do that, you must be asking yourself, am I working with gravity? And I have an addendum to that question. Um, and he does say this, he says, are we working against it? But my addendum is, are we able to resist gravity? So go on a little journey with me here, exploring how we can both work with gravity for our mutual success and survival as well as resist gravity. Um, I wanna to talk to you about a business I built, Control Studios. It's a classical Pilates studio. Uh, I built it with a wonderful woman named Kim Lerman. We were the co-founders. I just sold my half of my shares to her. I'm so excited for, to watch her grow and see where I go. But the bottom line is we created this classical studio based off of a method, Contrology, that Joseph Pilates, in case you don't know, this man, Joseph Pilates, created a strength training system whereby if you did all of these things, you were dry brushing your skin, most of us are familiar with this now, and you are, what else, working outside, working out outside more than you are working out inside, getting that vitamin D on your skin, you'll be able to find more balance right? That yin and yang, that balance between, am I strong and mobile? Can I be both? Can I balance the system? Can I do both things, i.e. work with gravity and resist gravity? So this strength training system, her and I, Kayla Lerman, we both fell in love with it in different ways. We were both operating a client list. We were both certified. We were both working corporate careers and moonlighting. I had found it when I was in high school as an athlete who needed to balance some over strengths and over hyper mobilities that were not playing to my betterment. Uh, it was incredibly effective. And that's when I fell in love with it and started training to teach it. She fell in love with it from a knee injury training for a marathon. Long story short, we opened our doors in 2018 to the great success of delivering this same process that Joseph Pilates created for us to clients in the Houston, Texas area, we were able to teach people how to resist gravity on the mat when doing mat exercises instead of fall into it, stand up and resist it, 
to find strength and also yet move with it, move in and out of the flow. So you need both things. You need precision, but you need flow. You have to have both to resist and move with. So inside of that brilliant strength training and mobility design process, we both found healing and were able to build a successful business that's still delivering incredible results to clients. So how does this tie in to Keith Ferrazzi's book? Let's jump out of the Pilates studio, out of this amazing book for a moment, and on top of that mountain in Telluride with me for some more figurative exploration of this idea of moving with and without gravity while also very finite because I'm on top of a mountain, um, literal and figurative. So I'm out there. It's my, I've dreamed of this my whole life. I've never skied ever, ever, ever. I've always wanted to do it. Never had the opportunity because it's so expensive and I grew up in Texas. So, you know, it's hard to get there. Well, I've been able to now with my wife and two other dear friends get to the top of this mountain. I spent a whole day training with a professional. I knew what I was doing and everyone said, oh my gosh, you'll be amazing at this. You'll be a stud. You're an athlete. Like you're going to kill it. Be nothing. Well, they weren't wrong. I was pretty good, but, but they were wrong. <laughs> it's not a total stud. I was fearful for my life. I got to the top of a green slope in Telluride called Teddy's Way and it completely I completely lost it. Um, all my dreams became as heavy as gravity itself. I was staring down this slope. My wife's at the bottom. She's already made it down. Our other two friends are like, see you later. Uh, I can't do it. I see a steep slope and a very small margin of error to go over this tiny bridge. There are skiers and snowboarders behind me of every age and in front of me and somehow we're all supposed, supposed to like go barreling down this thing and make it onto this tiny bridge over a, a street, a road to safety, no problem. I wasn't so sure. And I wasn't able to coach myself to move with gravity the way that I do successfully in my business, telling people be precise, resist gravity, don't give into it. And then also helping coach them at different moments when they needed to flow, another classic classical principle of Pilates strength training. You cannot always be so buttoned up and precise or you'll miss out on the other part pieces of the journey. Sometimes you have to completely let go of what you think needs to happen trust your instincts and just move. Even if it's a total mess, you've got to flow and give in to gravity, move with it more than resist it. You got to have both is the idea. I'm sort of hoping we can uncover here today through these two examples. And now I'd like to show you a video of this so that you can really get a grasp on what this Teddy, Teddy's way situation looks like. Um, hopefully I can properly insert the clip here. And in this shot, we have a brave Michelle hiking up the mountain to get her wife, Cora, who is stuck and cannot come down any further. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Anyways, I needed to have a bit more of my coaching that I would deliver to my friends, colleagues, the new teachers on the training floor that we were training and students of the method trying to master the ability to when to be precise, when to resist gravity, as I put it, and when to flow and move with it. So how does this relate to Keith Ferrazzi's coaching expression? I think you may already know, but what I'm alluding to is the idea that while he says we must move with gravity to have this profound force, be effective. And he may not be excluding the idea that you need to also resist gravity, but he doesn't explicitly say it. So I'd like to just explore it because he might be saying it inside of not saying it, that are we resisting gravity and are we working with it because we need to do both. But in case Keith, you watch this, in case you weren't meaning to say that, I'm gonna say it for us. And I would like to suggest that inside life and sports and teaming and co-elevating, there is a place for working with gravity as much as there is 
resisting gravity. There's equal power in both. And like any force, like yin and yang, fire, water, there must be balance. We can't have all one or all the other. It's important to be able to have both skills. And let me tell you, I did get back up on top of that mountain, y'all. The next day, I decided to coach myself the way I would coach somebody else. I told myself to lead with my heart and give in to gravity and work with it. I didn't really say work with it, but you know, for the book lingo sake, my internal mantra on those bunny slopes was lead with your heart and give in, give in to gravity. Once I felt brave enough to get back up there on top of Teddy's way, which again, that name is not befitting of the vibe. I'm telling you for a first timer anyway, it's like a grizzly, grizzly way, not Teddy's way. Anyways, I went back up and my hardened heuristics of resist gravity were already in my body. I didn't have to tell myself to resist gravity. That was gonna happen to survive. <laughs> But to thrive, I had to focus more on working with gravity and lean into it. And I went the whole way down that mountain. I mean, before and after that tiny little bridge I showed you in the video, telling myself, lead with your heart, ski with your heart, ski with your heart, give into gravity. <laughs> and it worked. Like as I had to coach myself to do the thing that I don't most naturally do, um, when I'm in a scenario like that, I learned, was give into gravity. If you know me in business and otherwise, I'm pretty go with the flow. And go with your heart and go with the movement, go with gravity, work with it. Uh, but man, I learned something on top of that mountain that when I'm scared, I'm not, I don't go with gravity. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Which is another interesting um, thought that he was bringing up on the greater concept and scheme of things. The idea I, I believe that Keith is presenting in this book is that if you're on his team of experts leading others, you need to dive a little deeper. I was in fight or flight mode. I'm hardwired to survive. So what was happening in that moment when this otherwise really balanced professional coach is able to typically guide herself and others around her to be balanced, lead with their heart, have equal mentation and inspiration from their heart, both working as a team in a balanced way. And then she's afraid she's gonna die and all that goes out the window. You're looking, you're asking, how could you, if you were gonna coach me, discover what was that what was that hardened thing in her DNA that was happening? What are we what is she hardwired to do? Survive. And how do we coach her out of stop trying to survive and instead thrive? And the answer, thankfully, with the love and cheering of my supportive friends and my spouse, I was able to find it in my own heart. And it was ironic I was reading this book at the time. That somehow was in me too, I think, some of this advice in the book. So I, I ask you at the end of this incredibly amateur TED Talk to explore inside your own heart and mind, which one are you typically leaning more towards? Working with gravity or resisting gravity? And then if you're like me and you think you're pretty balanced most of the time, when is a moment when you were not balanced and untangle that? Then read this book. It's a great read. Thank you.